What's going on guys, this is Boss Jansen and today I want to look at setting up a vocal template for my singer songwriters and producers out there. In front of me I have a cover of Don't Let Go by In Vogue, sung by my great friend Madeline from Germany and I think it'd be great to check out for this lesson. So as I said, this is for all my singer songwriters and producers out there who are not trying to get bogged down too much with the technical side of things. They just want to have a nice template set up, ready to go for when they're feeling creative. They can just open it up and as soon as they finish recording, it already sounds good to go for a demo. So this video is all going to be done in Logic just because I assume most of my writers and producers are using Logic rather than Pro Tools. I'm going to be using all stock plugins just so you can use the exact same tools as me if you so wish and you can follow along just as I'm doing it. So if we look at what we have in front of us, we have a piano track up here that we're just going to call our instrument track. It could be a beat, it could be a couple of stems for your backing track, or it could just be a piano, guitar, whatever. Just our instrument up here. Then we have our selection of background tracks here, and then one lead vocal track. And the first thing I'm going to want you to do for the sake of organization and just for ease when it comes to setting up the session as opposed to anything that's going to you know affect the sound this is just going to make it easier to set things up when you open it and want to get your ideas out what you're going to do is let's start with our instrument track uh set the output to a bus and we're going to call that instrument bus yep and then grab all of our background tracks and then send that to their own bus, bus two, name that background vocals bus, and lastly, our lead vocal bus. Cool, lead vox, whoops, bus. And what we're gonna do is just flick on and off uh, this automation power button here. And what that does, you'll see it come up on the screen here and we can move it around. What I like to do is put the bus after the group of um, recording tracks. So you'll see I have my instrument bus under the piano, the BGV bus under the group of background vocals, etc. And the reason we set that up is that it's easier. Like no matter if you have uh, full backing tracks of like drums, bass, whatever, or just a guitar, we're gonna treat this bus the same way that works for whatever the scenario may be, and then it's just going to matter about our gain staging into the bus that is going to make sure that we're set up correctly. Um, you know, for example, even on the lead vocal bus, if you decide to uh, have one track for just your verse takes, one track for just your pre-chorus takes, and one track for your, uh, your chorus takes, as long as you send those to the lead vocal bus, you're good to go. You don't have to worry about copying across plugins, making sure you did that right, yada, yada, yada. We're good. And then what I mean by gain staging in this scenario, so when you're getting a level on your mic, that it's at the right level to hit your first EQ or compressor at a right level that every plugin after that is gonna work in the same succession that it needs to. That'll become more clear when I show you that when we get to our compressors mostly. Um, that'll make sense when we get there. Um, but I just wanted to discuss that before we start. We just need to make sure that that is set in our first instance, like in our audio, at the right level, so everything, all the dominoes fall in line after that. And last thing before we start diving in is that I want to cover my three-step mix process that I use for mostly anything really. Definitely what we're gonna look at, especially on our vocals here. The first step would be a subtractive EQ, so we use an EQ to take out anything we don't want or we don't need before we go into the compressor, and then we use our additive EQ after the fact to add our icing on the cake. The reason we do it that way is basically how it all works around the compressor, so that the compressor isn't triggered by or working on frequencies that we don't want, or if it's starting to get triggered by and squashing the frequencies that we actually want to add and pop out some more. So that's the reason I do it in that order. So I noticed that all our background vocals came in nice groups of pairs. So we know to start with, just for the sake of ease, I'm just gonna pan those all to our extreme left and rights. And then I'm gonna play this middle section here so we can get a nice sense of all the background vocals going on. And then we'll just get a quick balance of everything just so we see where we need to take it. Move too soon, it will all end I live in misery when you're not around And I won't be satisfied till we're taking those vows There'll be some love making 
heart breaking, soul shaking. Ooh, love making, heart breaking. So, what's it gonna be? Well, Madeline sounds great. We know that much. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, drag our background vocals down, but I know that I'm going to want to drive some more volume and probably some more low end out of our piano. And then once we get to the bottom of our vocal chain, we'll bring the lead vocal down to tuck it in a little bit with everybody else. Uh, let's first look at beefing up that piano. Let's see what's going on here. So yeah, let's check out our subtractive EQ first. Yeah, I mean, honestly, not much to take out. As I said, I wanted to add a lot more, but when wanting to find the points you want to take out, a good tip can be to actually crank the EQ up and find exactly what you hate the most and then just drop the gain straight down from where you found the appropriate frequency. So that's what I did there. Um, let's look at our compressor. Yeah, so a good thing to start with would be to turn off your auto gain there just so you can really understand uh, what your compressor is doing as opposed to uh, the program by itself raising up the volume again and just making things louder. Um, I'm going to go for a slowish attack and a fast release just to make it hopefully sound more on the subtle side. And the same, I'm going to drop down the knee so it kind of uh, works more smoothly around the threshold. This would be a good time for me to plug my uh, Back to Basics series. If any of these knobs are still confusing you and you need a little bit more explanation, please go ahead further into my channel, Back to Basics series. There's uh, a video specifically on how the compressor works. So check that out. I normally start around a four to one uh, ratio pretty often. So let's see how that feels. Yeah, and then with your different compressor types up here, you can just kind of flick through them and see which one feels the best to you because they are actually pretty uh, diverse and versatile. So let's flick through a couple of these and see which ones we like. Set up a loop. Yeah, I mean, in this case, I like the vintage fat quite nicely there. Yeah, it made me even want to push the compressor a little harder and it still stayed nice and subtle and not too obvious. Unlike especially the uh, Platinum Digital to start with, sounded uh, pretty obvious and this vintage fat was pretty smooth, so I like that. Now let's check out our additive EQ um, to see how we can beef this guy up. Yeah, so in this case, at least with my shelving boosts, I was pretty, uh, you know, vague and broad there just because, again, this is a template. This I don't want to dial this in too hard specifically for this piano um, because, you know, I have no idea what it's going to be next time. So there's definitely things to check in with, you know, when you get a new stem, like is it hitting the compressor too hard? Is the EQ boosting way more than I needed to, whatever it may be. As I said, I beefed up the low end on that piano. I still heard a little bit of that annoying frequency I took out before. I could have opened the first one again and uh, turned that down some more, but I just did it here. Then I noticed there wasn't a lot of sparkle and air out of the piano, so I just added a nice broad shelf to the top there as well. Nothing too fancy. Notice I did put all my plugins on the bus there. That is going to become obvious why it's more important later. So keep noticing that as I move over to our lead vocal here, I'm going to grab our subtractive EQ on our lead vocal and see how that blends with our piano. Gonna be, cause I can't pretend. Don't you wanna be 
more than friends Hold me tight and don't let go Don't let go Have the right to lose control Don't let go Gonna be Cause I can't pretend Don't you wanna be More Cool. As a default, I always uh, run up my high pass on a vocal pretty high just to take out any of the rumble in the room. Vocals don't go very low, so I don't need to worry about preserving too much of that. And then I just did a little bit of uh, controlling the low mids there because that's definitely the easiest to uh, muddy up our vocal sound and make it really easy to lose clarity in our vocal there. So that's why I did that. And then a little bit of a kind of harsher area in the vocal, which kind of was a little song specific because this is a slow ballad. Uh, don't want it to be too harsh. Might not be something that ends up working out for every song. But yeah, that's another problem area to kind of check into um, if you're noticing that for yourself. Now, as we move on to our compressor for a lead vocal I like to use two compressors um, but they will also you know sit in the middle of our three-step chain the only reason I do that is the first one I like to set at a fast attack fast release just to do a little damage control to our vocals anything that kind of you know pops out a little louder than the other this first uh, compressor will just like control it and duck those peaks in very carefully. You're not gonna see more than two, maybe three dB of gain reduction because those are pretty aggressive settings, so we don't want it working too hard at all. Gonna be, cause I can't pretend. Don't you wanna be more than friends? Hold me tight and don't let go, don't let go. Yeah, if you don't see that needle even move for most of the song, that's not even a problem at all. If you see it move once or twice and it does 2 dB, that's all you need. Um, let's stick there for that one. Our second EQ is going to be a slow attack, a much slower attack. And a similarly fast release, I don't want it to be grabbing too much at our vocal. And then yeah, other than that, I'm going to set it up similarly to the piano because again, we don't want it to be too aggressive. Around a four to one ratio, I have the very soft knee over there. And with this compressor, I'm definitely not anywhere near as careful with it. We might get up to 10 and depending on the song, it could even use a 20 dB of gain reduction. So we can be more heavy handed with this one as long as it doesn't sound too aggressive. So once I've found a level, I'm going to start flicking through the different compressor types again, as we did on the piano to find something that still sounds musical. Uh, but controlled because that's what our compressor is trying to do for this vocal, trying to control it. Gonna be, cause I can't pretend. Don't you wanna be more than friends? Hold me tight and don't let go, don't let go. Have the right to lose control. Don't let go. Gonna be, cause I can't pretend. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that works. Yeah, again, this is just a template, so there's a lot of ballpark settings, nothing too uh, geared in, because, I mean, that would really be left to the mixing stage or something you're going to have to check in song per song um, if you're not liking how the finished product sounds. But this is going to be 99% of the way there. You know what I mean? So let's check in on the additive EQ on our lead vocal here. Just for a little bit of fun, I'm going to check out this vintage EQ selection. I think I want the console EQ. Yeah. I mean, but at the same time, you can do this with the uh, EQ, the channel EQ we've been using. Doesn't change anything. I just wanted to do this just to show a little bit of variety of what we got going on here. But let's see where we'd like this one to sit. Now I'll be satisfied till we're taking those vows. There'll be some love making, heartbreaking, soul shaking. Ooh, love making heart breaking. So, what's it gonna be? So, for the additive EQ for our lead vocal, typically you're gonna be adding in high end for that, you know, sparkle and air and clarity uh, and whatnot. You're not gonna be needing to add too much low end anymore. If you feel like you need to add some low end, you might have cut too much in your subtractive EQ as opposed to needing to add more now. But yeah, as we were dialing that one in, I did hear that we maybe could use uh, with sticking in a de-esser before our compressors just to 
control our sibilance. Our sibilance is those sounds that you make a lot when you say syllabance. Sibil... Syllab... Now I've forgotten the word. I've said it so many times. Sibilance. Yeah, so it's our S's and P's and whatnot, um, which are extra high frequencies that when you start adding that in the EQ, it's going to start getting out of control. So we want to add our DSer to just control those S's before we start adding a bunch of high end with our additive EQ. So let's find out where that is. So with our DS, so the, probably the first thing you want to do to find your great problem frequency is turn on this filter solo. It's basically filtered the signal so you only hear the uh, problem area that you selected with your frequency up here. And then an option you could look into is our filter here. It can be a shelf or it can be a bell notch that we're taking out. Maybe for a template, it might be smarter to look at the uh, broad shelf that it's just going to catch no matter what. Um, maybe in a more specific mixing scenario, you want to be a little more deliberate with uh, the bell here. But let's try it out with our shelf and see what we find. Yeah, so you can see I'm actually doing quite a lot there. And maybe that means I can go back to the EQ and afford to add a little more. Now I'll be satisfied till we're taking those vows. There'll be some love making, heart breaking, soul shaking. Yeah, now those S's aren't really tearing our head off anymore. That's great. <laughs> so what do we have left over? We have our background vocals. Let's start by just checking out our two vocals that we have here. Set up a nice loop. And let's check into our subtractive EQ. More than just friends. More than just friends. More than just friends. It will all end More than just friends It will all It will all end 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 so we can be a little more heavy handed with our EQ on background vocals than our lead because they are a little bit less of a priority in the mix and we don't want them to be taking up as much space as uh, maybe our lead is. So that's why I ducked the low end out uh, even more than our lead vocal and was focused in on controlling the low mids even more than uh, I was before. But for the compressor, let me just find one uh, nice smooth compressor to keep them in check. I don't think I need to do the uh, serial compression. That's what they call it in uh, in uh, the audio engineering. I don't know. Um, but we'll just use the one compressor for our background vocals. Uh, so yeah, slow attack, fastish release, four to one, smooth knee, auto gain off. And then our additive EQ, for the sake of fun, let me grab the vintage tube EQ this time. Modeled after uh, the Pultec EQP1A, something like that. I don't know. Let's crank some high end on these things. More than just friends. 
More than just friends. More than just friends. More than just friends. It will all end. Cool, so that works for our two stacks right there. A nice little bit of air and twinkle to our ear candy background vocals here. Now let's see if our whole choir that we have going on over here is totally going to blow out our compressor or if we need to maybe check the gain staging of uh, when we only have two vocals versus when we have six. Let's take a look at that. Love making, heart breaking. Compare that with our two vocals. So we're definitely getting a lot more gain reduction when the full group comes in, obviously. So let's consider bringing all these guys down so we get about the same amount of gain reduction on our compressor. So our gain staging stays solid. Yeah, we're still getting a little more out of the group, but that's fine. It's also just a more dynamic section. So I'm okay with that. Let's see how they all fit with our full group. Tell myself that we could be more than just friends. I know you think that if we move too soon, it will all end. I live in misery when you're not around. Till we're taking those vows There'll be some love making Heart breaking Soul shaking Ooh, love making Heart breaking So what's it gonna be? Tight and down Let go, don't let go Have the right to lose control Don't let go yeah, all in all, I mean, yeah, after a little bit of balancing on the buses like we did. Oh, I just realized I did a bit of balancing on this individual track, which I should have done on the bus. Because the reason I stress that so much, if you change the volume of the individual tracks here, that's going to change the level coming into our compressors. And now we n might not necessarily be... Um, getting the vocals quieter or louder, we're just driving them into the compressor harder and getting more gain reduction um, and squashing the track more but not actually getting it louder or where we want it to sound. So when we're making adjustments like this, make sure you're doing it to the bus, not the individual tracks, or else you mess up your gain staging. So if we had an example like this where our lower background vocals stick out a little more, but then we have our higher background vocals that aren't as present, but we need them to be. We feel them kind of getting lost when they sing. So we can hit A to open up our automation. And then with our setting our marquee tool here, hold command and draw the section where we want our first points to be. It'll create two points around our low vocal section. So we say, I don't want this volume to change. This is perfect right here. And then command select the next section and drag that up a teeny bit for our higher vocals. Let's see if we got a good balance between could those. could be more than just friends. I know you think that if we move too soon, it will all end. But yeah, all in all, that sounds cool. Last thing I would want to check in on is some effects. We probably want to put some nice luscious reverb on these vocals because it's a nice airy song. Cool. So for that, by the way, when I'm pulling up this little mix window here, I'm hitting X to get in and out of that. But what we're going to do is set up a send on all of our buses for the sake of organization. I'm going to pick five, send to bus five, send to bus five. And we're doing that on our sends this time, as opposed to our output. This is very important. Um, and then option click all of our wheels here. This is just gonna set the send level to zero. Rename this, reverb. And while we're here, let's do the same thing for bus six. 
I'm sure there's a faster way I could be doing this. I'm sorry, I'm not the fastest on logic. If anybody knows a faster way, please leave it in the comments. We're all trying to learn here. Uh, bus six, let's name that delay. And because we're fancy, we're going to send our delay back to our reverb. So on our delay track, have a send to bus five as well, just for fun. And to get that in our um, edit window, let's flick on our automation. Yep, now we have it here. Cool. So the first thing I do is no surprise, I want to set up a subtractive EQ before our reverb. And also we can cut out some of the highs just to make sure our reverb won't be too harsh. And then we should grab our Space Designer reverb here. I love this plugin. I wish they had it in Pro Tools. Um, mostly just because it has a lot of presets that are very well laid out and very easy to flick through. So what we're gonna do with that is pick a nice run of the mill preset we can start with and see what we think of it. I noticed I liked the nice hall. I mean, what what better place to start than just a nice hall, why not? That doesn't sound like a bad place to sing in, does it? We should mute our delay because we haven't gotten there yet. Um, I know I wanted to turn down this reverb because it's going to come in hot. And let's see how it sounds. It will all end. I live in misery when you're not around. No one be satisfied till we take. Sounds like a nice haul. But let's check out this delay. And this delay isn't even that essential, but it's just something to keep a nice little bit of motion going on behind the vocal. It's going to be very subtle. It's going to be felt rather than heard. And I have it going through the reverb to smoothen it out even some more. So let's take that mute off and we can uh, copy over our EQ actually, because that's going to apply the same rules there. Delay, delay, delay. I like a tape delay. I don't know. It's fancier, maybe. It's more expensive, tape. Tape is always more expensive, so, exactly. <laughs> and then, yeah, I mean, there doesn't need to be too much logic thrown behind uh, what you decide for your delay here, whatever feels nice to you. Let's try what this uh, quarter note triplet sounds like in this scenario. I know we just put the EQ on, but I'm just gonna throw these on just for fun. Yeah, I mean, with that, we could, you know, turn up our feedback a little more if we wanted uh, a little more of it. I mean, works for me. It's going to be very subtle. There's nothing too specific. So the last thing we can check into is setting up a little mix bus chain. Um, I don't want to overcomplicate anything too much here. You want to keep it subtle and just like the last, 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 last icings on the cake. One or two sprinkles, not a whole sea of the rainbow sprinkles. <laughs> But a generic setting can be to set up a nice little smiley face on our channel EQ, like 1 dB on each side. We're just going to add a shelf from, let's say, 10K up and about 100 down. Don't want to go too crazy there. And then we could set up a compressor if we wanted to. This compressor is really just going to act as a last gain stage so we can just see... Uh, where we're hitting volume wise with our mix and with this we're just going to set our attack as slow as possible and our release as fast as possible just so that the compressor acts as subtly as possible you could do a four to one ratio uh, typically probably bus compressors are working at less than that but yeah we barely want the needle to move if we're doing 3 db a gain reduction we're doing too much but let's look over the loudest part of our song here at the end and let's see if we can uh, gauge that in a little bit. Don't you want to be more than friends? Hold me tight and don't let go, don't let go. Have the right to lose control. Don't let go. Yeah, basically, I was using that as a gain stage. I noticed my mix was getting in a little quiet there, so I ended up adding 12.5 dB on the input there, uh, which is going to be the volume going into the compressor. So when you jack that up, 
make sure you're watching the threshold that you're not having too much dB gain reduction. And then our last thing to really get our demo as radio ready as possible um, would be to add a limiter. The thing with this is, again, you don't want to be too heavy handed with this. Um, the mix bus is always subtle, last little steps, never doing too much. We should set our out ceiling to minus 0.1 just as a little bit of a buffer, and then we just basically uh, bump up our gain until we're getting at most 3 dB gain reduction. But other than that, let's see how we feel on this. Don't you wanna be more than friends? Hold me tight and don't let go, don't let go. Have the right to lose control. Don't let go. I don't know how many notes he had there, uh, but that's about it. I mean, yeah, we could push it further, but this is a nice dynamic song. We don't want to squash all the dynamics out of it. That's about it really as far as the mix. Last thing we can do as far as coloring and making things look pretty so we know where to find it. If you right click uh, these icons here, you can choose whatever you want them to be. I don't know, backing track, metronome, I don't know. Uh, background vocals, this choir over here lead vocal or nice expensive mic reverb what would reverb be sound effects uh i don't know sparkle and delay is a dog because delay is a dog um and then at the same time option c you can color these if you want to a dark blue and a yellow and the red beat i don't know and the last thing to keep important for saving this actually is that you save the project as is, do a nice new save as, make sure that's clean and covered. Then we're gonna wanna select all of our audio tracks and then delete that with command uh, delete, making sure you're not hitting save on anything right now because we don't wanna overwrite our mix we just made. And then to be very thorough, we can hit our top right button here, edit, select all, delete. So we are not carrying all these old audio files with us. That won't be filling up the space on our template. Save as template. For the sake of this, I'm gonna call it Madeline Vocal Template just cause that's, it is what it is. And then when we hit new from template, close. I'm gonna hit don't save because I'm gonna to wanna to pull up the one with all the audio files again. Oh, pull this up from my other screen. My templates, Madeline vocal template. Cool, we have everything good to go. And then if we wanted to set up a new track, let's say I just wanna start with some lead vocals, create a new audio track. Just make sure I send that one to lead vocal. And, and we're, we're good. good. And now we're good to go with the routing that I've set up with my computer. Also, this latency is confusing me. I don't want to be too loud and set off feedback everywhere. But the fact that I have set this bus, now it's going to... It's going to our lead vocal bus, hitting the reverb and the delay, and going to our stereo output. This is all good to go. Thank you guys for checking out this video. Okay, I'm gonna turn off the <laughs> record enable so I can talk. Um, but yeah, that's all it is. Please let me know down in the comments if there's any questions left over, if there's anything I didn't cover clearly enough. Subsequently, please also comment if you have any other topics that you want me to cover. And if not, please make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified when any of the next gems are coming out. And other than that, have fun mixing. Oh, what's a girl?